and we are on and the show is going how's everybody doing long time no see there we go Anneli. sorry i left you off of there <laughs> you're on there now <laughs> okay um hello everybody welcome to our concert tonight uh we have a very interesting program tonight uh, uh featuring uh, carlos simon uh, diego vega and uh, the the long time running chamber music guy, musician guy franz schubert um this particular program uh it has uh, some interesting attributes to it and i asked Anna Lee to maybe say a few words um about how we put this program together so without further ado Anna Lee, i'll put you on the on the on the horn sure so the Carlos Simon Elegy, A Cry from the Grave, um, we chose because we recognize as artists and humans, we are called to continue to shed light on racism and other forms of injustice that are very much alive in our time. And this piece also gives voice to our collective grief over the senseless suffering that have that has been endured by so many innocent people. Uh, the second piece by composer Diego Vega was discovered by Ray um, as he was seeking out a Colombian composer. Many of you might not know this, but Ray is half Colombian. And so besides that connection, we also continue to um, seek music that represents uh, other countries and other cultures as our wonderful canon of string quartet literature um, it much of it is um, you know take, uh, is uh, written by uh, European composers Uh, other countries and other cultures as our wonderful canon of string quartet literature um it much of it is um you know take, uh, is uh, written by uh european composers Uh, other countries and other cultures as our wonderful canon of string quartet literature um it much of it is um you know take, uh, is uh, written by uh european composers i think we are losing anna lee just a tidbit here nancy and patty can you can you hear her at this point no, I'm just gonna shake my head. Okay, Emily, Emily, we're gonna we're gonna move on to the to the next piece here. So, I'm I'm gonna move on here, and we're gonna start the piece. This is the elegy by Carlos Simon, and uh, we will see you afterwards. Wait, wait, I wanted to say oh. a few words. Okay. Although I'm hearing feedback, is someone have YouTube open? No, from the four of us. And we're gonna we're gonna move on. Go okay. ahead, Patty. Thanks. Thanks. So, I wanted to introduce this piece because I'm I am the one that brought it to the quartet, and this actually was something that came from a collective of colleagues of mine, uh, all connected to Rice University, and they created this wonderful website called the Shepherd. Uh, Shepherd Equity, excuse me, shepherdequity.com, where they've compiled a list of African American composers and other P BIPOC composers' music into one wonderful website for mixed ensembles and um, ranging from string quartets to wind octets and symphonic works. So I do encourage everyone to check out this website for a resource for programming. But uh, I wanted to speak 
uh, the program notes written by Carlos Simon. Uh, and here, because I, I find the dedication to be incredibly, incredibly important. So here it goes. This piece is an artistic reflection dedicated to those who have been murdered wrongfully by an oppressive power, namely Trayvon Martin, Eric Gardner, and Michael Brown. The stimulus for this composing piece came as a result of prosecuting attorney Robert McCulloch announcing that a selected jury had decided not to indict police officer Darren Wilson after fatally shooting an unarmed teenager, Michael, Gre Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. The evocative nature of this piece draws on strong lyricism and a lush harmonic character. A melodic idea is played in all voices of the ensemble at some point of this piece, either whole or fragmented. The recurring ominous motif represents the cry of those struck down unjustly in this country. While the predominant essence of the piece is sorrowful and com com uh, contemplative, there are moments of extreme hope represented by bright consonant harmonies. This piece was written in 2015. And as we all know in history, there are many more that have been added to this list, uh, to the dedication list. And for me personally, and I would, I believe that the quartet echoes this, the most heartbreaking, meaningful part of this piece is that it was that its beauty is inspired by a recurring tragedy, tragedy that as a society, we are grasping at ways to uh, end the cycle. I extend this expression of grief and anger to the recent mass shooting of Asian Americas in, Americans in Atlanta that resulted in eight more names added to this dedication list. And um, it's as an Asian American myself, it has been a very, very challenging um, experience witnessing this um, tragedy that's happened. Please allow yourselves to release your emotions as we perform Carlos Simon's An Elegy, A Cry from the Grave.
quite a beautiful piece of music. And thank you, Patty, for sharing uh, your concerns of the current days that we're having here. Um, we'll all work to try to make a better place. And hopefully by presenting this music dedicated to these, these victims, uh, we'll draw attention to what needs to be done and, and, and make things happen and make changes happen. As mentioned, uh, I am half Colombian, and um, the next piece by Diego Vega was a result of having gone out into the internet and looked for Colombian composers. Uh, all very interesting discoveries, and um, I came across this particular piece that the Quarteto Latinoamericano had performed, and I contacted Diego Vega, and um, he gave a lovely interview, and uh, here it is. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, our guest, uh, Diego Vega. And uh, Diego, thank you so much for doing this interview with me here about um, your music. It's a pleasure that your string quartet is playing my string quartet. So uh, thank you. Diego, tell, tell the audience, please, how you came to write this piece of music. The, the string quartet was written th during my master's studies. I was at CCM in, in Cincinnati. I wanted to reuse some material that I had used during my undergrad uh, training, uh, specifically from a woodwind quartet I had written at that time. Um, so three movements of the current string quartet come from that woodwind quartet, the first, the third, and the fourth. And the second movement is entirely new, is, uh, is exclusive for the string quartet. And um, the origin, let's say, of, of that music, well, or the, or the music is inspired by certain, uh, the character or the air of uh, certain uh, types of Colombian music that I grew up with. Uh, specifically, uh, in the first movement, there's snippets of uh, pasillo, uh, danza, Cumbia, Mapale, and then the third movement is Bambuco, and the fourth movement is again Mapale. So it's contrasting uh, airs from different parts of the country. Say, are these all Colombian dances, uh, per se? M mostly, you know, uh, uh, because um, what we call the Gran Colombia was five times the size it was yesterday. It was Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia, all one country. And so we share, for example, Pasillo with Venezuela. And I think we share Bambuco also with Venezuela and Ecuador. Uh, Cumbia, I think, is very much Colombian because it's Caribbean coast Colombian. Uh, Mapale probably is also mostly Colombian. Uh, but let's say this more uh, mountain um, types of music like Bambuco, Pasillo, Danza are, are are shared among different countries in the in the Andean region of South America. Uh, what are you hoping the audience hears in your music? I, I must clarify that you know this uh, inspiration on, on Colombian is mostly rhythmic, right? I'm not imitating the form. I'm not imitating, let's say, or in certain way, let's say for the bambuco for the third movement, I'm Im imitating a little bit the contour of the melody, right? That the that the second violin and viola are playing all the time. I would like the the audience, if possible, to enjoy or to perceive the, the shifting of the meter. The, the cumbia, let's say, is, it shares with jazz the idea of emphasizing one, two, three, four, so two and four. You'll hear in the first movement, in the second that corresponds to the cumbia, you can hear the cello doing saltando uh, with the bow. In the third movement, bambuco, you will hear like a, a, a certain sense of shifting of the three, four towards towards the right, right? It's a little late, da 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 da. da. So it's a little bit after the downbeat, right? I would like maybe if if you know if people grasp this um, uh, rhythmic characteristics, right? And and hopefully hopefully try to enjoy them, right? The last one is fast and and visceral and, and is uh, very energetic, right? So it's, it's, it's a lot of contrasting um, uh, characters throughout the piece. I remember you mentioning the other day when we spoke about the vitality of the, not only the rhythms, but the piece itself, so that even in the slow movement with that uh, melancholy that you still wanted us to eh, have a, a strong sense of, of vital, vital. Uh... Like, like, like what we used to call in physics, potential energy. So it's energy that is contained there. It's 
it's, it's close to one of those emotions where we feel that strong sadness, um, melancholy, and, and there's something contained there that is about to, you know, burst. Yeah. And so that's the idea with the, the third movement, even though it's slow, it's full of energy inside it, despite the sadness. And you let us release that energy in the last movement, don't you? That's right. That's exactly right. So always, always, I don't know, I, I guess I always, um, I want sincerity as much as possible with the music. So I want uh, no filters with the emotions. I want the, the emotions completely out there, very sincere, very yeah, Kind of raw, almost, almost. Correct, correct. Yeah, raw emotions. And uh, that, I like that very much. Well, that's interesting because when we started to learn this a few weeks ago, uh, uh, the uh, fact that you don't use descriptors to talk to talk about your movements, I wonder if you could just touch on that. Sometimes I feel that names limit the imagination of the person who listens to the piece, and I don't want, I don't want to impose an, a, a specific imagery into the audience. Different string quartets around the world play the piece, and. And they don't, they are not limited by that. Right? I mean, the music will give you the character, I hope, right? Oh, I think it will. And, 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 and this is Colombian music from a Colombian composer. And that's why we're playing it. We want to add this kind of thought process and experience into our repertoire. So Diego, thank you so much for your interview and for uh, 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 sharing your music with us. And uh, we, we hope we do a good justice with it tonight. Thank you very much. I, I hope you enjoy the playing the quartet. I hope the audience enjoys listening to it. Thank you so much for inviting me.
fun. I am so, so glad that Ray Shows has finally played a piece written by a fellow Colombian. I'm so happy. And that was a, just a joy to learn. And what a wonderful man. I'm so glad you all got to meet him. You know, uh, we're going to play now uh, our, our big, huge, huge, huge piece. This is his last string quartet. It was written in uh, 1826 in Vienna at the very same moment that Beethoven, also in Vienna, was completing his last work, which was a string quartet, Opus 135. Uh, both men lived in um, uh, the same town, didn't have much contact, and were writing what, what we think are very actually quite different uh, approaches to their music. Uh, it actually, uh, one other, interesting point is uh, the young teenager uh, Mendelssohn was also that year just getting started on his very incredible Midsummer Night's Dream. So it's quite a quite a time for writing. Um, Timothy Judd from the Listeners Club says, slow down, close your eyes, and listen to this hauntingly transcendent final string quartet of Schubert. It's one of the handful of pieces that were written in his uh, final years, and they that move into strange, mysterious new territory. Both uh, Beethoven's final quartets and late Schubert offer a glimpse of profound revelation. But while Beethoven often takes us on a dramatic journey with an ultimate sense of resolution, Schubert's music can be less goal-oriented and more open-minded and open-ended. The great pianist and music historian Alfred Brendel describes Beethoven as the architect and Schubert as the sleepwalker. Goethe described Beethoven as concentrated, energetic, affectionate, and Schubert as some, a musician who lets himself be transported just a hair's breadth from the abyss, not so much mastering life as being at its mercy. Brendel says that Schubert's prodigious output of over 1,000 works in such a short life was not born out of will, but from a source beyond his powers. And finally, musicologist Kai Christensen describes the string quartet that we're about to play for you, the G major, as chamber music on a massive scale. The first movement alone can last between 15 and 20 minutes. Just heads up on that. We're not taking the first major huge repeat, so that will take away a few, a few minutes there, but depending on the tempo and whether the repeats are honored. Within the first few measures, Schubert establishes his familiar dichotomy between darkness and light. This was a very um, uh, central part of Schubert, uh, his, his personality, and especially in what was becoming uh, the last year and a half of his life. As a G major chord will transform simply, suddenly, and significantly into G minor, this mercurial and fundamental battle between light and dark, between G major and G minor, rages on until the very end of the quartet, 
some 45 minutes later. So get comfortable. This is a profound, beautiful work. And I'm so glad, again, that we are finally playing this. This is the first time in our career that we have played this piece that we have known and loved forever. I hope you enjoy it.
And we're back and having survived 46 minutes of Schubert. Bravo, everyone. That was a beautiful performance. And um, I'm delighted to have the honor to play it after waiting so long to do it. So I hope we'll play it again soon. I know that we are going to be playing it for Schubert Club very soon. Um, and then after that, we're going to be uh, tackling the Haydn Seven Last Words. We've never recorded it, even though Artari has played it for almost a decade. So. Any other thoughts we want to share with our audience as we move forward? Thank you all for being here tonight. It's fantastic to have friends and to play for all of you. Same here. Everyone stay well, and uh, we will be back uh, next month. Not certain exact on the date. We'll get that information out uh, to us, uh, to you. And then uh, we come back in May for a very interesting all women composer concert. So I look forward to seeing you guys back with us in our concerts. 
Take care. Hi.